Welcome to Grover Norman. I'm going to read Grandad's Secret Giant by David Litchfield. Little Billy was in a pickle. Grandad, he said, we've been painting the town mural all day. We can't finish it. No one can reach the top of the wall. Don't worry, said Grandad. I know just the chap who can help. He has hands the size of tables, Grandad continues. Legs as long as drain pipes and feet as big as rowing boats. Do you know who I mean? The secret giant, Billy sighed. You've told me about him a thousand times, Grandad. You're making it up. I never make things up, said Grandad. Do you remember when we went camping last summer? Yes, Grandad, Billy groaned. The giant was there watching over us, making sure we kept safe. And do you remember when the town clock was broken? Yes, Grandad, Billy mumbled. It was the giant who fixed it, said Grandad. And do you remember when our boat got caught in the storm? Yes, Grandad, Billy sighed. It was the giant who pulled us safely to shore. But that's impossible, Grandad, Billy said. I didn't see a giant. Maybe you weren't looking hard enough, Grandad replied. And that's not all the giant's done. He also stopped the big oak from falling in the wind, helped the cars across the bridge when part of it fell down, caught your kite before it flew away, and rescued Murphy when he got stuck on the roof. The giant does all of these things for our town, quietly without making a fuss, and nobody knows except for me. You don't get to my age without sharp eyes. But Grandad, Billy said, if the giant is so helpful and good, why does he want to stay such a big secret? Because people are scared of things that are different, said Grandad. When people see the giant, they scream and run away. It makes him sad. I wouldn't be scared of a silly old giant, Billy scoffed. If he was real, which he's not. Try getting up and going to the mural tomorrow at dawn, Grandad said with a wink. The next morning, Murphy woke Billy up at dawn. He tried to go back to sleep, but Murphy wouldn't stop barking. So Billy decided to take him for a walk and prove once and for all that Grandad's secret giant wasn't real. When they got closer to the mural, Murphy whined nervously. Don't be daft, boy, said Billy as they turned the corner. There's no such thing as a g giant. He was real. He was humongous. He was terrifying. Billy ran away as fast as he could. But then he had a thought. Maybe this is what Grandad meant when he said people were scared of things that were different. Billy turned back. But the giant had gone. Billy went to Grandad's and told him what had happened. I shouldn't have run away, he said sadly. We all make mistakes sometimes, said Grandad. But I'm sure you can think of a way to make the giant feel better. What makes you feel better when you're upset? Billy thought for a moment, then he had a great idea. Billy told Grandad his plan and they got to work. They hammered and they sawed, they worked hard all day to make the giant a present that he would never forget. When it was finished, Billy and Grandad hoisted Murphy up high, hoping the giant would come and rescue him again. Then there was nothing to do but wait and wait some more. They waited all afternoon until the sun began to set. What if the giant doesn't come back, Billy said. Maybe he's fed up of people screaming and running away. Maybe he doesn't want to live in our town because of me. But then they saw legs as long as drain pipes, hands as big as tabletops and feet as large as rowing boats. It was the giant. Just like they planned, he rescued Murphy from the ledge. Then the giant saw the present. For the first time since Grandad had known him, he smiled. Because what Billy had realised was the giant wasn't just a giant. He was also a person. And he wanted what everyone wants when they're upset. A friend. That's the end of my book. Thank you.